If you slice a golf ball, if you're struggling with a little bit more of an over the top club path and this club getting steep on the downswing, one thing to look at is where this club is aligned at the top of your backswing. One position that I see players get themselves in trouble with is getting this club a little bit too laid off. And what that's going to mean for a right-handed player is this club gets too far out to the left here, to the left of the target line. And this is going to be for players that start to have longer, and when I say longer, backswings, I don't mean you have to be way past parallel. I just mean if you are a player that is not excessively short. So you look at a player like John Rahm, club is very, uh, swing is very short, club is a little bit flatter and laid off, and that is a completely different matchup here. So if you are a player with a shorter swing, this probably isn't the best video for you or the best advice to follow. But if your swing is starting to get a little bit longer, hands starting to approach shoulder higher, getting closer to parallel, or a little bit over parallel, this is going to be something that can help you tremendously if you get a little bit steep. The reason this is an issue is regardless of where this club is aligned up at the top, on the downswing, our hands are always going to start working down towards the golf ball. We're never going to get here and just drop our arms completely behind us or push our hands out. Our hands are always going to want to travel down towards the ball. So the weighting of the club is going to play a big role here in the alignment of this shaft based on where you're putting force in through the end of this grip. So if I get up to the top here and I get this club very laid off or have this club out to the left side, as I start to apply force with my hands down towards this golf ball, you're going to see this club is going to start to steepen and get a little bit more over the top. Think of it almost like a seesaw. If I start to pull down on this side, the other side is going to go the opposite direction. It's going to start to work over top here. So if you're a player that gets up to the top of the swing, club gets laid off, you apply force down, club's typically going to steepen. This is where we need to realign this club and get this a little bit more down that target line. Now, as I start to apply force down through the end of this grip, you're gonna see this club is going to start to fall behind and start to shallow rather than getting laid off and steepening in transition. The typical reason that I will see this happen is players will have some sort of rolling of the forearms where you are going to get, again, for a right-handed player, the left glove logo starting to roll up towards the sky or the right palm is going to get up towards the sky. As you start to bring the club back and you add some forearm rotation, club is going to typically open up and that shaft is going to start to get very flat. So players will start to add forearm rotation. Now they'll go up to the top of the backswing, club gets very flat, they apply force down, club starts to steepen. So there are three checkpoints that I will give players because this can happen at different points in the swing. I'll see some players that will immediately roll this club open off the start. I'll see some players that bring the club back fairly well, but as they approach the top of the backswing, they start to add the roll. And I'll see some that almost get there, and then at the top, they add that roll very late. So there's three pieces or checkpoints that I will typically give players here, focusing mainly on this trail hand or right hand, for again, for a right-handed player. So the big thought here is going to be off the takeaway, I want you to feel like your right palm is a little bit more down towards the ground. As we feel that right palm more down towards the ground, that will keep that club face a little bit more square, club a little bit more in front of us, versus that palm going a little bit more open where that shaft is going to flatten, club is gonna open up. That second checkpoint is going to be when these arms are approaching close to parallel or lead arm is parallel to the ground. You wanna feel like that right hand is loading a little bit more Fingers up towards the sky, palm back towards the camera like you're telling the camera to stop here. That is going to get that club loading a little bit more vertically versus if I start to roll that palm up, you can see club gets very flat, face is going to roll open and behind me. And that last checkpoint is going to be up at the top of the swing. It's okay for the palm to be up at this point, but we don't wanna let these fingers start to creep too far back behind you. If you do that, that is going to get this club, again, too laid off. So that feel is going to be right palm down off the start, tell the camera to start, uh, stop at checkpoint two, checkpoint three, up at the top of the swing, we want those fingers loaded a little bit more down the target line. So if I get set here with my right palm open on this golf club, and I repeat all three of those positions, we're gonna feel right palm stays down, tell the camera to stop, get those fingers loaded at the target line. You can see that club is loaded down towards the target. So now as I start to turn and add force into that grip, that club is going to want to start to fall a little bit more behind me versus getting this palm up towards the sky, palm up towards the sky, palm up towards the sky with my fingers behind me. Now as I apply force down through this golf club, the club is going to steepen. So that is a feel and a couple of checkpoints that helps a lot of players that I've worked with. Of course, there's always going to be exceptions out there. You can find a handful of players that do get this club laid off and can shallow this club well from adding excessive hand depth or whatever it may be. But if you struggle with the slice and coming over the top and you notice at the top of your swing, 
that that club is a little bit too far laid off, those are going to be three big checkpoints to follow to try to get that club loaded a little more down the line. So if we take a look at this player example, his before swing is going to be on the top. You are going to see that as he starts to work this club back, this club is going to get a little bit laid off on the way up here and get a little bit flat for him. So if we get him to that left arm parallel mark and we get a line drawn down the shaft, we are going to see this is going to be pointed pretty far out in front of that golf ball. Now, as we continue up to the top of the swing, you are going to see that that club is going to be pointed out towards those blue barrels. It's going to get into a little bit more of a laid off position here, kind of pointing out to the left side of the target line. As he starts to work down, we are going to see that as he starts to apply force down through the grip towards that golf ball with the hands, that club is going to start to steepen and this club is going to start to work very over the top as it kind of flings itself over the shoulder there. So if we are kind of tracking this club on the way down, we'll get some lines here so we can look at the difference in this pattern. We are going to see that this is where this club is going to start. As he continues to work down, you are going to see this next line is going to be much steeper. As he continues down, you're gonna see this third line is going to be steeper than the second. And that pattern is going to continue where as he works down here, all of these lines are going to gradually get steeper than the last. And once he gets this club back to parallel to the ground on the way into impact, you will see that club head is fairly far outside of those hands. We never want that club to be outside of those hands at this point, or that is going to help contribute to that kind of out to end pattern, which we are trying to get rid of. And you're gonna see cuts across this ball quite a bit, really struggled with slices and low pulls, a lot of flipping going on with those hands to try to save it. So if we are using those red lines as a guide, we are going to compare that to where he is now. So as we look at this bottom video, you're gonna see as he works back, this club is going to load itself a little bit more vertically. So now as he starts to work up and we get this left arm parallel to the ground, you're gonna see rather than pointing way outside of this golf ball, this club is going to be loading much steeper, a little bit more in between the foot line and the target line there. As he starts to work up, you're gonna see a drastically different position of where this club is set, not out towards those blue barrels anymore. So now as he starts to work down and apply pressure through the end of the grip through, uh, with the hands towards that golf ball, you are gonna see that club start to lay behind him. So if we start to get some lines drawn down this shaft, you are going to see these lines are going to start falling in the opposite direction from where they were in the above video. Each of these lines is going to get shallower and shallower or flatter and flatter compared to the previous line. So that is what we are going for here. That is why this change is so important. And you can see as he gets this club parallel to the ground here, heading into impact, this club is now going to be a little bit further back behind the hands rather than this club head being way out in front of him and out in front of these hands, contributing to that out to end path. Now that path can be a little bit more into out and he's not going to have to stall and flip quite as hard through impact. That's something we're continu continuing to work on, but you can see that pattern in transition of getting that club to shallow is significantly better all by changing the uh, top of the backswing position and not really working on the downswing at all.